as we know, uh, like for myocardial infarction, which is also one of the leading cause of death. Okay, in myocardial infarction, the golden hour is very important. Like um, the thrombolysis or the angioplasty is very important because you know each our loss of, of management of coronary syndrome leads to increase in mortality. Similarly, for trauma also, an hour or a minute or a second, uh, which is wasted. And if it is not addressed immediately, it can lead to substantial increase in the deaths. So these are preemptive measures that we have to advocate. And the importance of the golden hour is very, very apt and very important. And this, in this golden hour, we need to immediately act pertaining to the assessment of the patient. Uh, okay, a, a brief history, brief examination is very, very important and, and immediate diagnosis uh, and stabilization is the key to uh, successful resuscitation of a patient of a trauma. For that, uh, whenever the patient comes to uh, the hospital, so uh, we need to do the primary survey of the patient. The primary survey is basically a quick assessment and quick examination of the patient pertinent to the airway, breathing and circulation. And the secondary survey is the later part of the assessment of the trauma where a detailed examination is done. So, but, uh, you know, any uh, receiving hospital, you are working as a doctor and uh, you come to know that the uh, patients are coming with the trauma or, you know, accident. Uh, we need to have a pre-hospital preparation. So, if we are notified that there is a casualty, uh, which can be either mass casualty or, uh, or a small casualty, okay, uh, where the number of uh, the patients are less. Okay, we need to have pre-hospital notification. Generally, the pre-hospital notification comes through the police or the social media, or I mean, there are the, it comes through the administration. Immediately, uh, uh, the administration activates the trauma team, and then the job of the trauma team is to activate uh, uh, the uh, supporting system uh, and have protocols and processes uh, 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 before the patient arrives uh, in the hospital. So the preparation, pre-hospital preparation is very, very important. In this pre-hospital preparation, we need to have uh, uh, preparation in the ER. So uh, ER, we need to keep everything ready pertaining to the airway-related equipments and uh, these patients may need a lot of blood transfusions. The blood bank needs to be activated. Even the uh, radiological services will also need to be activated. The availability of the CT scan, ultrasound, and X-ray, and sometimes the intervention the radiology team also needs to be you know available. We need to activate uh, the different uh, team members like the surgeons and. Uh, uh, especially the trauma surgeon's availability uh, is very, very important. And uh, along with that, the anesthesiologist who will be taking care of the airway uh, and uh, the nurse uh, who is going to handle a trauma nurse, which is, uh, you know, trained uh, enough uh, to take care of the trauma patients is very, very important. And the orthopedic surgeon also is available. So, so basically, a trauma is a multidisciplinary approach where involvement of the surgeon, the anesthesiologist, the nurse, and the uh, interdepartmental uh, services like orthopedics, neurosurgery, or cardiovascular, thoracic surgery, surgeon's availability is very, very important. So once we are notified that particular patient is coming, uh, so basically, we need to have a preparation in the form of uh, uh, airway preparation, if at all we have to do, we have to check the different sizes of the you know, laryngoscope, your crash cut trolley should be ready, uh, the pre-medication drug should be ready, the IV fluid should be you know, made available, which can be warmed, okay, because cold fluids can again cause hypothermia and can cause co coagulopathy and more bleeding. And uh, the uh, availability of the uh, uh, difficult airway gadgets is also very, very important. Uh, like video laryngoscopes and bougies and different sizes of the tubes and different sizes of the laryngoscope blades. Availability is also very, very important. 
and a massive blood transfusion protocol also uh, should be set in like some patients who come with massive blood loss so they may need a lot of blood transfusion so availability of the blood and blood products also need should be uh, also should be uh, made available so uh, so once the patient comes to the hospital an organized approach uh, uh, assigning the roles and responsibilities uh, of uh, the uh, uh, team members is also very, very important. It means everyone is trying to put IV line or everyone is trying to take care of airway uh, is not going to serve the purpose. So, so when you have a team of four to five people, so one person should be able to take care of the airway. The uh, uh, the other person, like a surgeon, would, would be available to check the different uh, uh, different injuries that are there and uh, staff nurse should be you know there to take care of the iv infusions and you know uh, uh, to make the things certain things available like you know communicating with the blood bank and radiology department uh, is very very important so a trained team uh, and then briefing of the team about the possible uh, trauma, what kind of trauma we have, uh, you know, that briefing is also very, imp very important. So, for example, we have a thoracic trauma, so uh, uh, availability of the thoracic surgeon is very important. If we have a head injury, the availability of the neurosurgeon is also very, very important. And, you know, if we have orthopedic uh, fractures, fracture, femur, especially and pelvic fracture, the availability of the orthopedic surgeon is very, very important. So, so pre-hospital notification and preparation is very important. And once the patients have come to the hospital, triaging of these patients, depending upon the severity of the injury is also very, very important because there are certain patients who have significant grievous, serious injuries, they need to be addressed immediately. And there are some patients who have trivial trauma, but uh, they, they are quite stable. Probably they can be addressed later. So triaging of the patients is very, very important. Um, like for example, a patient with a pneumothorax breathing difficulty and severe distress. So if a single intervention of needle decompression or ICD insertion can save his life, but same patient is addressed uh, uh, at a you know, delayed duration, probably he is going to die. So we need, we need to have a team which can triage the patient depending upon the severity of the injuries and then divert these patients. Uh, to uh, uh, to the uh, uh, area designated for trauma, depending upon their severity. So it is considered as uh, yellow. I mean, they, it is it is color coding. You know, the patients are diverted along the color coding. Uh, like green patients are the ones who are you know, stable. Yellow patients are uh, yellow area is the where the patients are likely to be deteriorated. So needs immediate attention. Red patients are those who need immediate attention and they, they should be addressed immediately. Whereas the area dedicated for black means the patient has already, already brought dead. So these are the patients you know, which can be uh, shifted to the designated area uh, for the dead patients, dead bodies. So that is how a systematic approach, uh, involvement of the administration, involvement of the multidisciplinary team, triaging of the patients is very, very important. And once the patient has come to the hospital, we should have initial uh, systematic assessment. The initial assessment is a primary survey. And uh, in initial sur survey, primary survey, we have to focus on A, B, C, D, E. 